Hi everyone, this is Nia and today I'm going to be painting a winter birdhouse and let's begin by sketching it out. Like usual, I like to create guidelines in the middle where I want to draw something symmetrical, but before adding on the horizontal line, I like to figure out the angle of the roof first on the left and right side. Then once I'm happy with the angle, I'm going to connect to the guideline and approximate the other side to make sure that they're more or less the same height. You can also use a ruler to draw the main structure, but I couldn't find mine when I was drawing this, so it's a bit crooked. At the bottom here, I'm also going to add a bit of space for the bird to stand on and also extra space for the decoration. Since we're looking at this from a slightly higher angle, I'm also going to show a bit of the roof, which I'm going to add some textures on later on. And here I erased a bit of the guideline, but I can still see it at this point. So I can create the circles and the area where the birch will perch on right at the center of the birdhouse. Now that I'm finished with the structure, I can start adding on the decoration and also some extra textures. At the top of the hole, I added a heart shape, but you can also add other things as well. And I decided to add lines to divide up the wooden planks for the wall of the birdhouse. Next, I'm going to be drawing out the decoration on the bottom right hand side. And here I'm just drawing out ovals in different directions as guidelines to where I'm going to place some flowers. And the large one there is for me to draw out a pine cone later on. After drawing on a few flowers, I'm going to finish off by adding some leaves surrounding it to frame them nicely. Then I'm going to draw out the pine cone. I'm not going to go into detail because I've already made a detailed tutorial on how to draw and paint a pine cone, which I will link, or please remind me to link it if I forget. Then to make the decoration a bit more dynamic, I'm going to add some pine leaves along the sides and I want them to reach outwards. I'm also going to add some very simple round berries, which I just drew on top of the leaves, then I erased the center. Next, I'm going to tackle the roof, which I'm going to divide up into three sections on both sides. Then this way it's much easier for me to add on the individual roof tiles, which in this case is going to be wooden branches, which has been cut along the bottom edge. So it has this weird shape below each tile. And I'm going to do this on both sides as well. I feel like the decoration is a bit heavy on one side, so I'm going to bring it more to the left by adding more pine leaves. Here I'm just quickly adding a bit of snow in case I forget. And then on the left side, I tried to make a branch that is sort of wrapping towards the left side of the birdhouse. And on this branch, I'm going to add some leaves as well as berries, which I might add on later on as I paint. Imagining this, I felt like the colors would be quite limited, so I decided to add a little bow in front as well. I feel like this is enough for the pencil sketch for me, so I'm going to draw on the cleaner outline with my ink pen, and this is my Sakura Micron pen in the color sepia. If you would like to, you can clean out your outline first, so it's a bit easier for you to see which lines to follow as you're adding on your ink pen but I'm just going to go over all of the areas here that I've drawn out, including the snowy patches. For the branch attached to the berries, I like to add a little triangular shape as the sepal to hold the berries in place so it doesn't look like those berries are floating on really thin lines. As for the leaves on the right hand side, I tried to make the edges a bit jagged to give it a little bit of texture so it looks different to the leaves on the branch with the berries. And I'm also going to add frills at the end of each petal for the flowers and also adding on the center of the flowers as well, directing the lines according to where the flowers are facing.
As for the pine leaves, I wasn't sure at this point whether I should just paint it freehand or still draw out the outline, but since the color is going to be quite dark anyway, I ended up choosing to draw the outline. This way, I don't have to figure out the steps and paint certain areas before others. This last bit is optional, but I feel like doubling the outline for the outer part of the edges so they're a bit cleaner and more illustrative. For the colors, I'll be using Indigo by Schmincke, Windsor Red by Windsor Newton, Cobalt Green by Holbein, Sepia by Holbein, Chinese White by Holbein, Yellow Ochre by Holbein, Hansi Yellow Medium by Daniel Smith, and Bleed Proof White by Dr. P.H. Martins. The first thing I'm going to paint is the front face of the birdhouse and for this I first use a mix of yellow ochre and Chinese white to create this creamy color but it was a little bit too brown so I added a touch of Hansi yellow to brighten the color and the tiniest bit of sepia to mute the color slightly and this is the color that I come up with but you can also choose other colors since this painting is very customizable. Since this part of the birdhouse is made out of wood, I do want to create a little bit of a wooden texture. So as I'm applying the paint, I am directing my brush strokes vertically downwards or you can also do it upwards. And while I do this, if I only stick with one color and one consistency, the lines that I painted won't show through because the color will just blend into each other. And another trick that I like to do is to add a slight bit of a different hue. So in this case, I added a touch of sepia ever so slightly just to change the tone. And this little variation will also help with the streakiness or the wooden texture. I'm just going to finish up with the base color of the front face of the birdhouse and I'm just going to paint behind the flowers as well where a bit of the color is peeking through. As you can see this area looks a bit flat so I ended up using a little bit of a darker color in a thin consistency to create more streaks and textures and I'm also going to use a medium consistency of the same darker value and paint in between the wooden planks to create a slight shadow. I want the pastel heart to be green and I first use a mix of cobalt green with a bit of Hansi yellow and I also added a touch of the creamy color but I intensified the color by actually adding more cobalt green because I like the contrast a little bit more to the background. I also ended up muting the color slightly by using a mix of Hansi yellow with a touch of sepia. For the whole, I just used my darkest color which is sepia and I'm just going to paint a flat wash. After this, I'm going to be painting the roof tiles and for this, I want the brown to be a little bit light and warm. So I used sepia as the main color with added Hansi yellow and a touch of Windsor red to make it a little bit more orangey. I'm going to use this color to paint the bottom part of all of the tiles and I'm going to also do this on the other side. For the rest of the roof tiles, I'm going to use the same color mixture, but this time I'm picking up a lot more sepia, so the tone of brown is much darker. While painting, I try to also follow the direction of where each roof tile is facing. This way, I just feel like it helps slightly with the dimension. This is basically the same concept as how I've painted the front face of the birdhouse. I'm trying to create a textured surface, so I'm trying to make the area that I paint a bit more uneven by intentionally leaving out a bit of space in between those streaky lines that I've painted to wait for certain areas to dry before painting the rest of the surface. After I finish painting on the darker brown, if I look at the left side where those areas are dry, the colors look a bit too similar to the lighter brown. So here I added more Chinese white to the previous orangey brown color and I painted on top of it to lighten the value and build a bit more contrast. 
As for the bottom of the roof, I want the color to be very bright and vibrant and I wanted to contrast the other elements that I've painted so far and this is from a mix of Crimson Lake and Sepia. For the perch, I'm just going to use the dark brown mix from Sepia and Windsor Red and in front, to separate those two faces, I use a thinner version which has a bit of the yellow mixture from earlier. And for the circle, I use the same red mixture from Sepia and Crimson Lake. Now let's move on to the decorative elements. I'm going to introduce a different hue. For the berries, I just use straight indigo and I also left out a bit of negative space for the highlights to make those berries look a bit shiny. And as for the leaves, I just use Hansi Yellow mixed with the indigo to create a dark green which is still cohesive with the color of the berries. This is also where I started drawing more leaves freehand and don't worry, I will include this in the downloadable outline. Now moving on to the pine leaves, I decided to create a different tone of green by using the same green mix as the base, but this time I added some cobalt green as well as a little bit of Chinese white to make the color a little bit more pastel and icy. While I'm painting this, I also want to make sure that I cover most of the pen marks, especially along the tip. Next, I'm going to be painting on the berries. For the base color, I used a mix of Windsor Red with a touch of Hansi Yellow Medium. And this is just to make the color a little bit more orangey. And just like the previous berries, I also left out a bit of white negative space for the highlights to make it look shiny. While I wait for the base color of the berries to dry, I'm going to move on to paint the pine cone. For this, I tried to create a more neutral brown by using sepia as the main color and I added a bit of the reddish brown as well as the yellow brown that's already on my palette. And I'm just painting in between the scales, leaving the tip still white. As for these leaves, I just used the light green mix that I already have on my palette with added cobalt green and a bit of the yellow brown. For the pink of these flowers, I use a mix of Crimson Lake, Windsor Red, and Chinese White. And I use a thick consistency to paint the edges. And I'm basically painting really thin lines in a really light brush load to create those separate lines so they look a bit textured. For the skirt as well as the base of the birdhouse, I just used the dark reddish brown mix. Here I decided to add some more pine leaves behind the flowers because I felt like that area looks kind of empty after I've painted everything. Next for the bow, since I want to make this more colorful, I introduced a different hue which is just the yellow. I use Hansi Yellow here and my palette has a little bit of brown which in turn made the yellow more rich in my opinion. And as I'm applying this, I want to create a checkered pattern and for the inside of the bow, I just use the reds that I already have on my palette. Next, I'm going to add shadows to the red berries. For this, I added Crimson Lake with a bit of indigo on the sepia or the reddish brown mix. And I'm placing this underneath the berries that I've already painted. Then going over the top part again using Windsor Red to make the color more saturated. Next, I'm going to be adding more wooden textures to the front of the birdhouse by adding Chinese white to the yellow brown that I already have on my palette. And I'm using a light consistency so the color is subtle enough and not too glaring against the soft background. And I also want to use a light brush load so the brush strokes have a slight dry brush texture. For the slight cracks or space in between those wooden planks, I'm also going to enhance it by using an even darker value. So here I picked up some of the reddish brown as well and mixed it into the previous color. Then I'm just going to create those streaky brush strokes again between those cracks. After this, I'm going to switch to a larger brush and pick up basically the same color, but I added more water so it's in an 
even lighter consistency and I'm going to paint the shadows underneath the roof as well as the heart and the perch and also behind the flowers. Next I'm going to paint on the shadows of the snow and for this I just use mostly Chinese white with a little bit of indigo and I'm just placing it quite randomly, mostly I'm just visualizing the bottom and also adding random textures with a light consistency. While I'm painting on the snow, I'm also going to add on more using bleed proof white and I'm using a thick consistency here to make sure that the snow is more or less opaque and I'm just dotting it with my small brush again, especially at the tip of each layer of the roof tiles. I like to bunch most of the dots along the tip so they're more dense and as I get towards the top of the roof tiles, I make the dots a bit further apart. I also ended up adding the highlights on top of the berries so you don't have to actually leave the negative space if that's a bit too difficult for you to paint. So here I'm just going over the berries again to make it a bit more round looking and the highlight basically follows the curvature of those berries. And here I'm also adding some snow to the tip of each section of the pine leaves. After adding on the whites, I feel like I want to exaggerate the darker colors further. So I'm going to mix indigo to the green that I already had on my palette. And this time I'm painting it at the bottom of each section of those pine leaves. So it creates more of an exaggerated value as well as shadows. And I'm also going to place this darker color behind the leaves of the flowers as well. After this, I'm going to go back to the bleed proof white and add more snowy textures. Now looking back at the roof again, I feel like I need to add more textures. So here I'm using a thick consistency of sepia. This might also have a bit of red, it doesn't really matter too much. Here I'm painting underneath a snowy pile to create more of an exaggerated difference in those layers. And I'm also painting really thin lines using more or less a dry brush to create those finer textures. I'm also going to use the same dark brown to paint the shadows or the darker values for the pine cone as well. And here I decided to exaggerate the shadow underneath the roof. So I'm using the same color mixture as before and I'm just layering on top of it, but using my smaller brush this time so there's a bit of a shadow layer. I also ended up using this color but in a thicker consistency to paint over the branch on the left side which I accidentally forgot about. By doing this, it'll just make the branch look a little bit thicker and stronger to hold the leaves as well as the berries. 
After adding on more shadows and textures with the darker values, I felt like the hole need to be darkened as well. So here I'm just using a thick consistency of sepia with the reddish brown and indigo. And I left out a little bit of negative space at the bottom to show the lining of the hole. And from here on, I'm just going to add final adjustments to balance the values and textures. And that's pretty much it for this painting, which you can also use to create Christmas cards. If you guys enjoyed this video and would like to see more of this type of content, please consider subscribing. Like usual, all the list of tools as well as my social media links will be in my description box. If you guys are still here, thank you so much for watching till the end and I'll see you guys at the next one. Bye!